Hey you guys, welcome back. This week's video is going to be about how to draw Lily of the Valley, also known as Our Lady's Tears, Mary's Tears, because supposedly they sprang up out of the ground or grew after Mary was crying at the crucifixion of Christ. And so if today's Good Friday, I thought maybe why not go ahead and do this flower. It's a symbol of hope for a lot of people. I think it would be kind of festive to do this weekend. So thank you to Mo Pat K for suggesting that I draw this flower a couple weeks ago. It was on my list for a while because um, I just think that they're so cute, these little flowers. Oh my goodness. You'll see if you haven't seen a uh, Lily of the Valley before, you'll see it in this video. And you'll see, <laughs> uh, uh, my tongue's really red. I was eating candy. But yeah, you'll see in this video how stinking cute these flowers are. So um, anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna show you how to draw the flower and then a cute, really cute, simple project or application that you can do with this flower or any other kind of teeny tiny cute flower. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so as usual, pulling up that reference photo. I just Google search Lily of the Valley and choose a photo that I like. Starting with my Micron pen, this is a number one pen. I'm gonna start with this long candy cane-like line and start drawing these little cute bulbs. And then I start kind of mapping out all the little spaces that I want to have. The flower, if you're looking at the picture, you can either mimic exactly what the picture is doing or you can kind of pick and choose yourself. The bulbs at the top are generally going to be more tightly closed still because they're the newest little babies. And then the ones closer to the bottom are going to be more opened up. But you really just draw kind of a bell shape and it has little almost ghosts. -like. They're like little Pac-Man ghosts, oh my goodness. So yeah, you kind of just draw almost like a bell shape like that. And then draw the little petals. It's really simple, really cute. And some of them are curled upward towards you, and that's kind of what I drew in the bottom ones that are more opened up and the petals are kind of curly. I'm gonna kind of map out the leaf really simply. They look almost like tulip leaves, just really massive compared to the flower itself. And then I'm gonna add these cute little, almost like, they're, this is just where the flower bursted out of the stem, you know what I mean? Like this is how it grew out of the stem. You can see it in the picture when you look. I'm just thickening up the stem. I'm cleaning up my leaf a little bit, making sure all the lines are just right to my preference. You don't even have to thicken up the lines. If you want to leave it as a simple line drawing, then you can. You can totally just say, I'm done. This is how I want it to look. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to go back in and add details just because I like to. With the leaf, I'm actually going to choose to leave it open like that because I don't want things to get too muddy and I want to be able to really see those cute little flowers. But for the petals and for the little, for the actual flowers themselves, um, I'm going to go back and draw some details. Lily of the Valley have these little stamen on the inside and so I just drew a few little dots to represent those on some of the flowers that are more open. And there you have it folks, Lily of the Valley. Look how simple that is. So I'm gonna give you a few little application sort of things that you can do with these flowers. I'm switching to a pencil, um, just your average old pencil, and I just drew a cursive L. We're gonna do one in cursive and then one um, as a serif font, which I'll kind of talk about a little bit more later. So it's easy to draw that L in pencil. That's kind of my guideline. It's gonna be erased later. 
and then I kind of follow the curve of that L and draw my lilies, lily of the valley, lilies of the valley. I don't know what the plural might be for that one, but I'm just kind of sketching that out, going ahead and drawing it, not making it super perfect, just getting that general shape of the lily in there. And I always thought lily of the valley was um, <laughs> like the morning lilies or like the Easter lilies, but then I looked them up and I was like, oh, it's actually these cute little teeny things. So I just love them, I think they're so cute. So I'm just going in and thickening up that stem, really making sure that everything is prominent and just right, add a little detail, and then I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing the L. And then I'm kind of just, you can either leave it as just um, a letter like that, you can thicken it. You can even add on like the rest of the word. So if you have maybe a name or something, you can totally add these lilies to the name, even if the name is not Lily. So I just kind of created this um, double lined font here, just a cursive, nothing too crazy or too perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase. But you can also, uh, also come in with a thicker pen. I'm using my Tombow brush pen. I think this is the hard tip. And you can just go over all of it and thicken it up. So the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to create a serif font. The serifs are just those little lines that are at the top and bottoms and things like that. Those are serifs. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and do an L again, but it's going to be a capital L and I kind of start with that. And then I create two lines to thicken it there and then a thin line. A lot of times I'll look up a picture of a serif font and then make sure I'm figuring out which lines are supposed to be thick and which ones are supposed to be thin. And so the serifs, I kind of thicken them up a little bit like that. And then I add these curved lines to connect them like this. Obviously doing this in pencil first, and then I'll show you which lines I choose to keep. So that's a good base. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and draw that lily of the valley, just like I did before. Kind of deciding where I'm gonna put the leaf, where I'm gonna put the flowers. And then I'm gonna switch back to my pen and draw the lilies first again. So I know when I'm drawing the lines of the letter, I know which pieces are gonna end up going behind the flower. So just like that, get that massive leaf there. And I decided to fill in all the lines for that one, thickening it up. And then I'm gonna go around that outline of the L to create a nice, beautiful serif font. Erase those lines and then boom, it's beautiful. You can also color it in so you can make the L, instead of just the outline of the L, you can color it in like this. And that's just a second way to kind of spice things up. It just depends on the vibe that you want, what look you want. I think it looks really nice. And there you have it, folks. It's a beautiful way to spice up your lettering with some floral illustration. 
All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great holy weekend, I guess, um, Easter weekend. I hope you guys just take the time to, you know, just remember in your hearts and ponder on all the things that the Lord has done for us. And also, I hope you spend some time with your family this weekend. Give your loved ones hugs and phone calls, FaceTime dates, and all that kind of stuff because this is also a really important time for families to celebrate together. Oh, if you like this video, like, um, give me a thumbs up. I don't usually do this, but, and eh, no, I'm not gonna do it. Anyway, um, if you have any questions or comments or anything, then you can leave them below. Um, I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this flower and this activity that I, um, showed you today. <clears throat> so yeah, I will see you guys next week. I hope you have a great weekend. See ya, bye!